Well, welcome everybody. I'm really pleased to have you all here today. And this is gonna be a fun chat that we're gonna talk a little bit about ECO's early history. Um, I've been with ECO for about 21 years and I know all three of you have been with ECO from the beginning, so I guess about 38 years. And I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to learn more about the early years of ECO as well as our audience. So I'd like to introduce um, Wanda Beck and Larry Beck and Jeff Spielman. Um, Wanda is our principal violist and has been for much of ECO's history. Larry is our principal oboist and has been throughout our history. And Jeff is our principal bassoonist and has also been principal throughout the pretty much 38 years. So you've got three people here who have pretty much seen it all in terms of ECO. And I should also say that Wanda also for much of ECO's life was pretty much our operations manager, director of operations. She pretty much ran the orchestra along with the board and um, has been an amazing force in keeping ECO going all these years. And I can say that for all three of you. Um, perhaps uh, we'll start off uh, just with you, Wanda, a question for you. Um, and that was, can you tell us how ECO started up? What are your recollections of how ECO began all 38 years ago? Well, we had several friends that we had met uh, playing in the pit orchestra with the Evergreen Chorale and, uh, and playing many shows with them. We decided it will be fun to do something other than show music. And somehow over the years, I've collected a lot of large ensemble things. So we just uh, started asking people to uh, play in our home. And we had some double woodwind quintets and quartets. And I'm not sure where I acquired all the music we'd start having afternoon sandwiches and music. And I remember Sue Robinson was one of our early cellists and she always brought this dish that was slices of bologna with mayonnaise in between. And it's packed <laughs> about five inches high. Yeah. And everybody just kind of said, oh, but everybody ate it. And so we had that and apple juice. And we'd play from like two to four and we had an unfinished room above our garage and right. that's kind of how we we started and then when we got a little more involved there was a, a lady that was kind of like the assistant conductor of the evergreen corral her name was sharon baker and we invited her to come to a rehearsal and she said well we ought to do a concert and so we said okay we got to have a name and the name at that time was the colorado colorado chamber symphonia huh? so we did um, a couple concerts and uh, then we found out Bill Morris lived in Evergreen and kind of contacted him. But that's how it started. Do you remember where those first concerts were held? Uh, at the Methodist yeah. Church up on uh, what Highway 73, 74, across from the Safeway or kind of catty corner across from Safeway. Yep. Yep. Yeah, on the okay. east side there, north yeah. and east of Safeway. And we had a couple concerts at what was the Open Living High School at that time, it was, and it was near Evergreen High School, or Evergreen uh, Library. Mm -hmm. I see, okay. And so for those first concerts, do you remember about how many people were playing? Oh, maybe depending on, on what we did, anywhere from about 15 to 20, something like that. Okay. Maybe a few more. You got quite a few people together early, early yeah. on. Yeah. It kind of depended on the music, and then we asked people depending on the music, because we, you know, we'd been playing in Jefferson and sometimes we'd ask people to come up if we needed a particular instrument. I see, okay. Well, maybe that's a good segue into you, Jeff, in terms of how you joined, how you found out about ECO. Well, I, I, was, um, I was playing in the Arvada Chamber Orchestra, which is no longer around. And um, I got a call at my work from Harlow Kittle and uh, she said my name is Harlow Kittle and I was I said really it just didn't sound like a name to me and, uh, she uh, asked me if I'd like to play with the Evergreen Chamber Orchestra well actually she asked me if I played bassoon first and I, I said sure and um, uh, so I went to a couple rehearsals and then the concert at the Methodist Church. 
And um, I, I played third, third bassoon. Wow. Uh, some Stravinsky piece. And I remember Larry was, Larry played second oboe and on that. I don't know how all that worked out, but, um, and then after that concert, um, Bill uh, asked Larry to play principal and, and he, and asked me to play principal. And we did the uh, Mozart concertant for Four Winds and Orchestra. Yeah. And so that's, um, that's how it worked out. I, I don't know why he asked me to do that. I was just there to play third bassoon, you know. <laughs> it was a, a very challenging third bassoon part. It was Stravinsky. And, you know, nothing's easy when you're playing Stravinsky. So anyway, um, and so I guess that was my audition. <laughs> Stravinsky. Well, yeah. that's impressive that you're and really, I, I did know there and, and Rwanda at that time. I just, you know, uh, I got to know them, especially Larry, you know, when we we're doing the, the Mozart concert time. Uh -huh. and, and I thought, this is, this is great. And I lived, um, at that time, I lived down in Denver. And so um, I thought, well, this is great. I'm going to move to Evergreen. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> so you have ECO to thank for that move up to Evergreen. That's great. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah I, absolutely. I think you were spending a lot of time uh, uh, underneath automobiles at that point. I, I was. Yes. I was. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I had an auto repair shop on uh, West Colfax in Lakewood. Yep. Well, actually, that's a good time to bring in, uh, you know, so, so Jeff at that point was uh, in Evergreen rehearsing in Evergreen and performing in Evergreen as we're, uh, as Larry and Wanda, but Jeff now has uh, moved a bit further afield. In fact, he moved quite a bit further away quite some time ago. So tell us about that, Jeff, and your commute to ECO rehearsals. Well, you know, there was um, a couple that uh, were in the Evergreen Chorale that um, I also wound up doing a uh, pit orchestra uh, playing with with Wanda and Larry uh, for the corral. And I got to know these people and uh, he retired and he wanted to buy a business. So he, he looked at the bowling alley in Chapel, Nebraska. And uh, it was not a good deal, but they thought it was a cute little town. So they moved there anyway. And the first week that they lived there, um, my wife and I went to visit them. And uh, she thought it was a cute little town too. So we moved there too. <laughs> <laughs> and so that started my life commuting to the Evergreen Chamber Orchestra from Chapel, Nebraska. And uh, over the course of time, we moved uh, back into Colorado, but only slightly. And uh, I've been driving 204 miles to rehearsals ever since. That is an amazing thing. So yeah, 400 and something miles round trip. And Jeff does it all winter long, because of course, many, most of our rehearsals are in winter. And um, he shows up for almost all of them. So impressive, very impressive. <laughs> I don't miss often. It's no, you don't. Extreme. You don't. In fact, Jeff often opens up the church and gets things arranged, and as do Wanda and, and Larry. And so, yeah, yeah, that's that's quite incredible. He definitely wins the prize for the longest commute to ECU rehearsals. <laughs> No doubt, yeah. Well, Larry, uh, tell me it's one of your memories of the early days of ECO, I don't know, within the first 10 years or 15 years or so. Do you have yes, a Yes, well, on that? possibly some of the most memorable, of course, uh, like Jeff said, we, we did the Mozart uh, double quintet, and we also did the Dvorak uh, uh, 10, 10 member uh, group with the orchestra. And uh, uh, just the rehearsals for that and the performances uh, with the orchestra, we, we struggled to have enough space in front <laughs> of, of, of that orchestra and still enough uh, room for audience in the place we were performing. So uh you know either place uh that Wanda, Wanda mentioned the church or or the open living school uh was too small <laughs> for her. um 
such a big uh, solo group. So we struggled a bit there, but it, it came off well and uh, the audience seemed to like it. So I, I, I never forgot that. I think we might, might have done also uh, some mixed strings and winds Stravinsky uh, up front. And uh, I, I know we did because uh, that uh, took a little bit more doing. And then of course, I had some solo performances um, uh, in later, well, not too much later years mm -hmm. uh, doing, uh, uh, goodness, what was that? Well, you did Ralph, Ralph on, Rafe on Williams. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and uh, I don't know how I, I chose that, but I worked very hard and took the music with us to Hawaii. And uh, <laughs> when I got back, uh, we got through that. And uh, uh, Bill Morris was, was uh, also kind enough to allow me to uh, play uh, with the, the concertmaster in uh, Mozart, uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, uh, violin and oboe piece. That's uh, a Bach. A Bach, Bach. Uh, not, not Mozart. Bach, 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 yeah, yeah. And I played uh, that with the concert master and on that concert, Kathy Thayer attended in the audience. Uh -huh. That's when she first met us. And um, she was enthralled with, uh, uh, you know, joining us. And of course, it uh, wasn't very many more years that that, uh, just the next year or so that that happened. So. Right, right, because Kathy's been concert masters with us now for 16, 17 years, something like that, I believe. So this is Kathy Thayer, our concert master at ECO that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. How many well, concert masters has ECO had? Do you remember? I think three. Three. three yeah. Yeah. About right. Sharon Seeley was concert master for a while, and we might have had a couple guests for a while, but I don't, we haven't had very many. Yeah. Well, that was the Russian lady. Oh, uh, yeah, Lydia Sklovskaya. Yeah, the, uh -huh. yeah. But she was only three or four years, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for an orchestra that's been in existence for that long, that's not many. And, you know, Kathy definitely has been with us for quite a time, almost as long as me, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the thing that we don't have now that we used to have to do was haul all of our equipment. Ah, and yeah. that was a big, big ordeal because when Harlow and Chuck lived here, Chuck kind of took the reins there because they had a trailer and we had to haul risers so that we could uh, not all sit on the floor. We had to haul chairs. We had to haul lighting and put up on the beams at the Methodist church. And so it was, it, it added about an extra three to four hours yeah. to the concert. Right. Uh, come and set up because we couldn't leave it overnight. Right. So we're real grateful to not have to do that. Not to do that anymore. Yes. Yeah. So Harlow was our principal clarinet at, at the time. I remember um, at Rockland, because we eventually started uh, rehearsing and performing at Rockland, which is when I joined the orchestra, we used to put up risers as well that were incredibly heavy. <laughs> and so there was a lot of work. Yeah, there was a lot of hard work involved in all of that, no doubt about it. And the other difference over the years is we used to have stand lights that had to be plugged into extension cords. Now all of us have stand lights that are uh, rechargeable batteries. So we no longer have extension cords all over the place, which is a major improvement. Yeah, yeah. we're a lot more high tech now. Than that. <laughs> we are, we are. We all have about this, we all have that same light. We all, we're, yeah, we all think it's the best, best light and it's, it's worked out well for all of us. That's right. We had to build a shed. Yeah. So, and then get permission at Rockland Church to put the shed on so that we could store the risers and the rest of the stuff was stored at Larry's in my house. Right, right. Uh, we had, once we had the shed, it was uh, incumbent upon us to uh, ro roll out all the equipment and, then, and set it up with uh, Ray Hunter's uh, help. Yep. 
and uh, <clears throat> uh, we didn't want to see him fall off the ladder, so a lot of the rest of us ended up on the ladder, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that was always uh, exhausting, and then of course we had to have a rehearsal, so. <laughs> <laughs> after you had got all that set up, that's right. But, that's and right. then take it all down after the concert and roll it out, clear out to the shed, no matter the weather or the snow on the ground. Yeah. Many um, times in the snow, I can. Yeah. Right. The right. snow. <laughs> you know, there, for several years, it's the, at least the first concert, it always snowed. Right. <laughs> right. That was before the climate started, started changing. Snow. We used to usually have yeah. snow. That's right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so there was a lot of work involved, and um, Auckland, yeah. there still is, but perhaps not so much uh, heavy labor <laughs> as it used to be. Yeah, yeah. So how about you, Jeff? Any other uh, early memories that yeah, you would I, want I to think share? That I remember is, um, I think it was in the 2000, which would be 20 years ago now, um, eight of us went, went to uh, Chico, California, and played a, um, a, a nonette, which was uh, a woodwind quintet and a string quartet, nine, nine players uh, by, um, who was it? That nonette, oh. Was it Reinecke? No, no, it was um, a violinist. Uh, oh man, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could start naming violinists, but I don't know if that would be. <laughs> Begins with an S. Um, hmm. No, nope, not coming to me. It was in my mind before. I anyway. <laughs> yeah, anyway, we had the only one that that didn't come from Evergreen out there. Oh no, there were two. There was um, uh, uh, the uh, violinist. Uh, yeah, violinist from from uh, San Francisco. And the bass player. Uh, the bass player came from Fresno. Yeah. Oh, and the cellist came, was, um, came right. from out there too. Right. Yeah. Anyway, so we went out there and we, we did this uh, uh, non yet. And then yeah. we came back and we did it again with, um, with Art. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's great. Was the, that for one of the recitals? You did it for yeah, a recital? Yeah, a recital, uh huh. Yeah. And, the ACO yeah, has also had recitals. Boy, he just nailed it. He just, he played so well. Oh, that's great. It was really yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the other thing that ECO does regularly are chamber music recitals that continue to this day. And, um, you know, those have been performed, used to be performed, I guess, mostly at people's houses, right? When you started yeah. up the recital series. Yeah. And we're now doing them at a church in uh, Conifer in the Episcopal Church there. But those are fabulous because you get to hear our musicians playing in smaller groups. Was it the Spore? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Spore. Yeah. Spore. Yeah. Spore. Spore. I looked it yeah. up. There we go. <laughs> our collective memories, right? <laughs> spore. 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 Yeah. Our state. yeah. Yeah. That's great. German. Well, yeah. Excellent. Well, I think that's probably all the time we have, but that's been wonderful hearing some of your early memories and i know our many people in our orchestra who have joined more recently um, including me um will be interested to hear some of this and uh, we may do it again i think it's great to have some history for organizations like ours so future right. generations as eco continues on into the future we'll have some idea about how we started well it's been a wonderful 38 years and i want to get back to playing Oh boy, do we all want to get back to playing yeah, so, so much. much. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I think for all of us, uh, one of the key passions in our lives and playing with ECO really is a pleasure and all the people, so. Definitely. Yeah. Go ahead. And it's encouraging, I think, to see that we've had some younger people come in. Oh, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's been really encouraging. Yeah. Because. I mean, it's, there's been, you know, over the years, a lot of turnover in the orchestra, but we still remain a really cohesive group right. that just loves, loves playing together and loves getting together every Tuesday night. To, well, to as you well know, it's a, a big job uh, to uh, uh, have uh, to do what you have done yourself and uh, as both president and uh, uh, a leader of 
all sorts, and we're very grateful yes. for that. Well, thank you. It's taken a lot of different people over a lot of time to keep this orchestra going. So we're very grateful for our current board and all the hard work they're doing. And, uh, you know, right now making various contingency plans for next season, depending on where things go. So hopefully we'll be playing at some point. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for all your hard work because you do a lot of things that none of us realize you do. So we well, appreciate it. Wanda very well knows that because she did them all previously. Because <laughs> <laughs> you love the group and you want to see it continue. Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll be uh, airing this on our um, summer ECO summer soiree which will be on June 13th. And so hope to see you all there. Great. All right. Take care, Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye-bye. Yeah. See you.